types of functions. Okay, so three different types of functions, injective functions, surjective functions, and bijective functions. So the first one I'm going to deal with is an injective function, also known as a one-to-one -one function. Why so? Because for every one input, there is only one output. And so for every input, there is a unique output. That is very important. All the elements in the domain have been used. So here's our domain or our input values. And all the, the elements in the domain have to be used in an injective function. But all the elements in the codomain do not have to be used. So you can see here that 8 is not used. But this is an injective function because all of the inputs have unique outputs. 1 goes to 5, 3 goes to 7, 5 goes to 9, and uh, 7 goes to 11. Now, if you look down also, a test for an injective function is if you draw a horizontal line across through the graph. For an injective function, the horizontal line can only cut the graph once. Now, the next type of function is a surjective function, okay? So, for a surjective function, every element in the codomain, so here's our codomain over here, is the image of at least one element in the domain, okay? So, look at the difference between it and the injective function. This is a surjective function. A goes to F, but B can also go to F. They don't exactly have to have unique um, outputs. Uh, C goes to G, D goes to H, and E goes to I. Now, all of um, the codomain has been used. So this is very important. In a surjective function, the range is equal to the codomain because every single value in the codomain has been used in the range. Every single input um, has used up all of the possible outputs or all of uh, the po uh, all of the elements in the codomain. Now, for a surjective function. Um, you use the horizontal line test again. Now, both of these graphs are surjective functions. This is a surjective function because the horizontal line um, cuts the graph at least once. Okay. Now, I know that I said for an injective function, it could only cut it once, but this cuts it at least once. This is also a surjective function because the horizontal line cuts it at least once. And you can see there it'll cut it once, twice, three times in this particular function. Now, moving on to our next type of functions, which are bijective functions, okay? Now, a bijective function is a function which is both injective and surjective, okay? These functions are one to one function, but every element in the codomain is used, okay? So remember, one of the conditions for um, a surjective function was every element in the codomain used, okay? So a bijective function, if asked to um, describe a function and say if it's bijective, look to see if it's both injective and surjective. And what's very important with surjective is also to make sure that the range is equal to the codomain. Now, this is a very good example down here. State whether each of the following maps, uh, mapping A to B, are, um, uh, are one functions, are two injective functions, three surjective functions, and four bijective functions, and give a reason for your answer, okay? So deal with each one separately, okay? So uh, graph number one, the first thing you're asked is you're asked, is it a function, okay? So does every input, um, just have one output, okay? So is there, another way to describe this is in A, is there only one arrow going from um, each element in A? And yes, there is, okay? So um, it's a function, I'm just going to call the function Fn, okay? And only one arrow from each element in A, okay? Two, is it injective? So for every input, is there a unique output? And yes, there is. It maps only onto one element in B, okay? So yes, um, it's injective, okay? And the reason is that um, 
each element in A maps to only one element in B, okay? So only to one element in B. So maps to only one element in B. Now the third thing we're asked is, is it surjective, okay? So first surjective, um, all of the elements of the codomain have to be used, okay? So the range and the codomain um, have to be the same and the range and the codomain in this um, part A are not the same because that's the range, that's the range, that's the range, and that's the range where the lines uh, connect and this one isn't used, okay? So it's not surjective, okay? because the range is not equal to the co-domain, okay? And you can also say that all uh, elements of the co-domain are not used. And the last one we're asked is for a bijective, okay? So is this particular function bijective? And the answer is no, okay? So it's not bijective. Okay, and the reason for that is because it's not injective and surjective. Remember, to be bijective, the function must be injective and surjective. So, and um, because it's not injective and surjective. Okay, now, so moving on to part B. So, you're given this function here and you're given the domain and uh, the range and the codomain over here okay so first of all is it a function yes it is a function because um each input only has uh, one one arrow going for it so part one is it's a function okay and once again it's only one arrow from each element in a that's important Two, is it injective? So does uh, does each input have um, a unique output? Okay, yes, it does. So um, it's injective. Okay, so each element um, in A maps to only one element in B. So a unique output. Three. Is it surjective? Okay, so with surjective, remember the range and the codomain must be equal. Okay, so um, the it is surjective, so it is surjective. Okay, and you can say that the range is equal to the codomain. Okay, and number four is it bijective? And yes, it is bijective, so yes, it's bijective because it's injective and surjective, okay? And part C over here, okay? So we're asked, is it a function first of all? So um, we follow the lines across, so only one line coming from each of our elements in A. So part one there is, uh, yes, it's a function. So yes, it's a function, okay? And the same reason as the others, because only one line um, going from um, each of the elements in A. Number two, is it injective? So for um, each, for each input, is there a unique output, okay? And you can see there, that um, these two elements here share the one output, so it's not a unique output, so therefore um, it's not injective. As um, two elements in A share the same output, so it's not unique. Number three, is it surjective, okay? So, if you look here, surjective, okay, so looking okay, except for this one here, okay, so um, the range, so it's not surjective, because the range over here, remember the range is this one, this one, this one, and this one, and it's not equal to the codomain, because one of the elements isn't used, so it's not equal to the codomain, okay, and number four is, we're asked, is it bijective, 
then it can't be bijective. So it's not bijective, okay, because um, it's not, not injective and surjective, okay? That's a very important example, as you will see when you go on into the exercise. Okay, so one more example that I want to look at uh, is this one here on the graph of the function okay so you're given the graph and you're asked some questions on uh, the graph okay so you're given the function and you're told that the, that the domain is real numbers and that the codomain is also real numbers so you're asked for the range of the function that's the first thing you're asked for so in a question like this you have to look closely at the graph okay so the range of the function remember the range is the output so it's the y value so we're looking at the y values and it definitely starts at minus two so we have minus two but it goes on and on so it goes to infinity and we have our curved bracket okay you could also write that as the y values are greater than or equal to minus two they're the exact same uh, thing that i've written there okay part two you're asked explain why f is not injective okay so for injective um you can look when you're given a graph always um think first with this horizontal line test okay so first of all um if you draw a horizontal line across here it's going to intersect the graph twice okay so um it's not injective uh, because horizontal line will intersect curve more than than once okay now there is another um reason for this and the reason is that if you look the definition of an injective function is that it has, it has a unique every input has a unique output if you look here if you input minus two you get two if you input two you get two okay so um you can say that um also another reason would be that minus two uh, gives an output of two and two gives an output of two so therefore each input does not have a unique output okay so that's just another reason for that okay part three you're asked explain why f is not surjective okay so remember uh, the conditions for surjective was that the horizontal line will intersect at least uh, twice okay now you could fall into the trap here because yes it does intersect at least twice okay but one of the major conditions was that for a surjective function the range must equal the codomain now we've already said that the range is values and um, the range are values greater than or equal to minus two remember that the range was um greater than or equal to uh, minus two. Now, if you look at the codomain, which is all the possible y values, okay? So the codomain were the set of real numbers. So the codomain were basically any y values. So the set of real numbers, okay? So therefore, the reason it's not surjective is because the range does not equal to the co domain so as i pointed out at the start there be careful that you don't fall into the trap when you're given the graph of just looking at the horizontal line always look at the range and always look at the co domain part four and um, suggest a domain for f to make the function injective so suggest a domain for x um to make the, the function injective so an injective function if you look at the graph here and um, the horizontal line if i were to cut off that side the horizontal line would intersect just once okay or to do the opposite to cut off this side the horizontal line would intersect just once so therefore i could talk about a, a domain where the x values are just greater than or equal to zero or um, that would give me greater than or equal to zero would give me a curve looking like that or I could say less than 
or equal to zero, which would give me a curve looking like that, okay? And either of those is the correct answer. And the reason um, would be, I know you're not asked for it, but the reason is that the horizontal um, line will intersect once, okay? And part five, um, suggest a codomain for f to make the function surjective. So suggest a codomain for f to make the function surjective, okay? So remember that to be surjective, uh, the range must equal the codomain. And I said that the codomain was all was the set of real numbers, okay? So if you restrict the codomain to just y values greater than or equal to minus 2, then you end up having uh, the range equal to the codomain, okay? So therefore, it would be a surjective function.